Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Vampire. Dan here with No Games for Old Men, and I am going to just loot the heck out of the Ascalon Club before I leave. <laughs> they seem to have stuff, so we're gonna take it. We are a member now, so, uh, you know, we get to... We get our run of the place. We have been tasked by Lord Redgrave to interview citizens of the West End and see if we can root out the source of this infection that is turning people into skulls. I'm a little concerned that Lord Redgrave at some point is going to have me go back into the sewers to ki- oh, a key on a white plate. That's not suspicious or anything. Is this a test? Let's put a key on a white plate and see if the new guy steals it. Key to the Asklon Club basement. I'll bet there's some really sinister stuff down there. Uh, let's check out the other wing of the building here before we leave. Oh, oh, what is that? A good dagger. So this rivals then Giselle's dagger, perhaps. So at level 3, Giselle's dagger is a 12 blood absorption. The good dagger... It's a little less. It's 10, which is the same as actually the, the Liston knife. But it doesn't have any upgrades, so potentially the good dagger is better than even Giselle's dagger. Well, it's mine now. I keep it. White roses. Is this uh, William Marshall? Could be William Shakespeare. Okay, here's the other side of the the meeting room. All right, downstairs we go, and let's see. Yeah, look, man, they're they're not even attempting to clean this up, though. You would think that they would want their. Is he responsible? This guy here, all by himself, responsible for cleaning this up? If so, he's not doing a very good job of it. Wow, just how did so many prewins get in here? Even through, I mean, they would have had to have traveled through the West End to get here. There weren't any corpses outside. Oh, wow. Ooh, nice office, man. Wow. Oh, what's this? Okay, well, I want to finish exploring the room before I delve deeper. I like that painting. You know, when I was growing up, my parents had a painting that was very similar to that. That was a stormy sea with a, a, a shipwreck on the... Wow, I wonder if that's... Was that a famous painting and I just don't know it because I'm an ignoramus when it comes to art? All right, let's check out this letter. The history and purpose of the Ascalon Club. The Ascalon Club is an association of gentlemen secretly aiming for the protection of the crown's interests. I founded it in 1837 to honor and perpetuate the legacy of my maker, William Marshall, first Earl of Pembroke and true protector of England. All the members of the club must be of good extraction and flawless moral fiber. Since the club accepts mortal members, who will be duly observed and valued as proper candidates for immortality. The goal of the club is to impose respectable traditions and behaviors among the vampire, the good vampire society, but also to promote and expand the imperial hegemony of England. We are the true elite of British society. We are Ascalon, the holy lance held by St. George, protector of England. When the saints slew the dragon, 
As lance bearers ourselves, we vow to defend the Empire's interests. From the Law of Ascalon by Lord Redgrave, founder. We have now met that gentleman. He claims he was a military general long ago. In his mortal life, probably. Let's see what this door... Does this go to the basement? Oh, door's been unlocked. With the basement key, perhaps? Yep, we're going downstairs. I mean, the key was sitting in the lounge, so that tells me... Is this just a wine cellar? No. A bunch of wine racks, but they're empty. Another document. Of the recreational use of blood. Come on, guys. As Ascalon members, we always tend to respect etiquette. We are, in all ways, members of the good society, member sometimes recognized as public figures. We do not find our delight in orgies and bloodbath like our adversaries assert we do. And if one of us were caught in such caricatured and immoral acts, he would receive the appropriate opprobrium. I'm going to look that word up. I've never seen that word before in my life. It probably means punishment, but a very fancy and highfalutin way to say it. But what about the blood? What about its recreational use? How could we deny the ecstasy of the vermilion ambrosia brings us? And with what else could we toast with, as any good fraternity should... To answer this delicate question, the law of conduct inside the club goes as follows. As long as the original mortal vessel is not brought inside our walls, each member is allowed to drink whatever he wants, for his own usage or to share it with friends. Drink what you want. Deal the way you want with the original vessel, oh no, but never inside the club. Unless I personally authorize it on some special occasion, of course. From the Law of Ascalon, by Lord Redgrave, Founder. <laughs> oh, do what you want with the mortal vessel. Rude. Okay, so is this door accessible? It is not. Alright, so the sole purpose of the basement so far has just been that document, which is a cle- uh oh. <gasps> I'm stuck. Oh, there we go. Ooh, wow. We were stuck on that stair. Who closed this door? It wasn't me. Oh, am I gonna get an opprobrium for being down there without permission? All right, have we finished entirely this exploration? Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Yeah, he's just got nothing else to say. We're gonna go ahead and borrow these shillings from the company coffers, I suppose. This door, inaccessible. Okay, well, out we go then. Ladies and gentlemen, let's head into the West End and see what the citizens have to say. I also feel like I am probably pretty under-leveled at the moment. And I've got quite a few experience points to spend. The reason I haven't is because every time you rest, the health situation in all of the districts changes. And so I wanted to make sure I had administered treatments to all the people of Whitechapel because they were all very ill. Many of them were, at least. We seem to be in a better... What is happening? I want... Yeah, that's where I want. Okay, so, yeah, everyone who was ill is recovering, except for Benjamin Palmer, who I cannot treat at the moment, so... I think we're in a good condition there. That will probably bring this meter up to stable unless a bunch of other people get sick as well. And we still have this gentleman to find. 
and I think this might be I think this might be the person who understands Braille so that'll solve that side quest we are also I need think to Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire Okay, so, uh, what I was gonna... Oh, here, alright, chat, chatty chat. Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Oh, come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. What? How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. Now, Clarence Crossley has been the author of some of the documents that I've located. He is a vampire hunter, isn't he? Or at least he's cautioning people to seek out a vampire. Oh boy. We're gonna have to kill our best friend here. <laughs> when did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. What is this new battle? I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. Uh-oh. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. Okay, got some hints to unlock for him. Let's go with personal questions. Oh, wow. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other. Venus. So many things have happened. But you're alive. You returned in one piece, and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. <laughs> Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. Have you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny? Uh -oh. Venus fears for our family reputation. Now her husband has become the village idiot. Hmm? Venus Crossley, what are you doing? Hints, hints, hints. Nope. Okay, so that was a hint about Venus, not about Clarence. All right, let's ask him about. I'm investigating infection. the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. If you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies. Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough <laughs> movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. Rut row. All right. We'll check out the Malanies. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Oh, is he ill? Migraine. I can't cure migraine either. All right, so already the health of the West End is in <laughs> is in difficult position. All right, let's head toward this area here because that oh, it's doing it again. Where I can't I can't focus on eh that. I don't want to do that. I want to place a map marker. All right, let's just walk. We don't need to. Warning leaflets. West Enders must unite. Don't let them fool you. Wow, my computer's really freaking out. Don't let them control you. They are amongst us. They lust after your soul. Vampires are real. Defend your community. Oh, Mr. Crossley. You're gonna... You're gonna make a real bad thing happen. Aren't you? You're gonna make me do something bad in a video game. Other 
pickups here? No. Okay. Um, we're heading to Emily's house, we hope. That's not it. Oh, nope, it's definitely not it. Wow, how did I get so turned around? All right, so I need to turn around and go to this little market area. Go this way. There we go. All right. Nice courtyard area. Wow. Swanky. Hello? Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I'm so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. <laughs> I'm sure you can spare me a few minutes. For old time's sake. Of course you may enter, Jonathan. At least you survived the great I thought this was Emily's house. What? I feared the worst. It's a pleasure to see you again, Venus. So you return from the war in one piece, too. Thank God. My Clarence is back home, too. How is the old rascal? Probably outside, chasing ghosts and chimeras. Clarence has changed a lot since he returned from the war, you know. How have you been since the last time we met? How long has it been? Three years now? I've done my duty, like all British women. You have no idea what it was like. To wait for months without knowing if I'd still be a wife or a widow. I understand. Luckily, this part of town has been saved from the worst of the bombings, from what I've seen. Yes, and it's also true about the epidemic. The flu has killed here too, of course, but not on such a large scale as in other parts of town. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the neighborhood recently? You mean except for your return to town? No. Oh, and again, Jonathan, please accept my condolences for your sister. Thank you, Venus. It was so sudden, and I've been so busy, I haven't <laughs> spoken to anyone about it. I wish I could have assisted at the funeral, but you know, it's been so quick. And what with the epidemic in the streets? There's no need to apologize, my dear. It's normal considering the circumstances. No, it's not. I am sure that Clarence has not even thought to present you his condolences. He is too busy with his penny dreadful stories. Why is my return so surprising? It's more an unexpected happy end than a surprise. You and Clarence, back from the war. You have no idea how hard it's been for me. You know, I think it was a little harder for the men on the front line. So, let's have be a little understanding yourself too, miss. Venus, why do you worry so much about your family's reputation? Everyone laughs at Clarence now. And they avoid me because they believe I share his insane opinions. I'm a leper in my own community. Tell me about Clarence's obsession with vampires. It drives me so crazy, it makes my stomach hurt. I was so relieved to have him back. But I quickly realized he'd lost his mind in France. I understand your irritation, Venus. But you have to accept the trauma Clarence endured on the battlefield. The question is simple, Jonathan. Is my husband mad? Yes or no? 
do vampires exist? Or is Clarence a lunatic? <laughs> uh, I mean, I could answer that, but... So you don't believe Clarence? If poor Mary, bless her soul, had tried to convince you of the existence of bloody vampires, would you have believed her? Seriously? The important question is, what do you really think of your husband? I'm tough, Jonathan. He should have told me the horrors he witnessed, however appalling it was, instead of inventing a fantasy about blood-drinking monsters. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? The McPhersons. I heard they locked themselves in their own house. They could just be afraid of getting sick. Perhaps you're right. But if I were you, I'd pay them a visit. A big house, reachable through a courtyard, to the north of the railway bridge. Okay. Goodbye for now. Good directions. At least you survived the Great War. I feared the worst. Okay. Uh, we're not at Emily's house. We... Does she actually live in the North Docks? I think so. Okay, well, let's let's finish checking this out. I'm not going to rob Clarence. Well, I don't know. Why not? Mm, nah. I do want to see if there are any like collectible documents around, though. <laughs> well, I mean, you do you have a point. Wait, what was that? Oh, okay. I'll be gone in a moment. We're not. Just, uh, just gonna go upstairs. Breach of etiquette here. The lady is at home. We should not be in her room without the gentleman of the house present. Oh, here we go. Oh, no. Yes. This. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Venus's journal. Uh-oh. <laughs> we shouldn't be doing this either. 19th of July, 1918. I spent the last day and night crying. Crying tears of joy. I did not know bliss could be so painful. My Clarence just wrote to me. He's back from the war, alive and unharmed. He will be at home in two weeks. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see my beloved husband again. 14th of August, 1918. Clarence's attitude still worries me. He's not the same since he came back. The first few weeks, I thought it was just the necessary adjustment period, but his behavior seems to be more and more erratic. Nowadays, he spends all his time outside, day and night, searching for evidence. He does not care about the flu. He does not care about me. He's starting to frighten me. 21st September 1918. I can't believe this. Clarence has spent half his pension to print some stupid leaflets. He wants me to f feely give away? Freely. I'm sure that's supposed to be freely give away in the neighborhood. People are starting to laugh at me. Now he wants to organize some public lecture in a recently closed theater to warn people about the presence of some evil, of evil creatures in London. Free entry, of course. My husband may have come back unharmed from the war, but I'm afraid he lost his mind over there. 24th September. Clarence just confessed he has not spent half his pension, but all of it. Plus some of our savings. Paper and inks cost so much because of the war, he said, but it's a cost we must pay. People openly mock us now. I don't know what to do. 5th October 1918. Today the butcher, Mr. Galway, sent me the monthly fee and requested payment in full. He also told me now, he, he now demands to be paid each time we buy some meat from his shop. No more credit. The baker asked the same thing two days ago. First I thought it was a new policy because of the restrictions and the epidemic, but it seems my friends have still have financial arrangements from the same shop. I was so ashamed I could not speak. 8th October. We can't keep on like this. Clarence is completely mad. He spent all the money we have, and I don't see how to stop him. Sometimes I wish... Oh, I wish he did not come back from the war. Venus. Come on now. Alright, so that unlocked a new hint for Clarence. Any more... 
documents. Can I go out here? Oh? What? Why would I be able to do this? Uh, I can't actually get out there onto this area. So I don't know what the purpose of this is. Unless, oh! Look at that! Yoink! Jump to anywhere else? Doesn't seem like it. It seems like that. I should be able to get onto that scaffolding, but I guess not. Ah! Uh, oh! That was an accident. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, now I th this door, did I see a glow? No. It's been a trick of the light. So that's just their back door, I guess. Oh, hiccup. Oh, that's their kitchen. Okay. Off we go. Wow, she doesn't even know I left. I just went out the... Okay, now is this where I get to Emily's? Yeah. So she's around here somewhere. She's behind me. Uh, hmm. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, North Dock is critical. We knew that. Well. I don't think Emily. I think Emily lives in the do, uh, the the West End. I'm just not. Hmm. Wait. Oh, wait. There it is. It's right above. Is that how I get to Emily's? Do I have to bother Venus again? Let's try this one more time. Hello, Venus. Hello, Jonathan. Please come in. Oh, well, but you survived the Great War. Didn't even have to coerce her this time. All right, we're going upstairs. Through. We can see if there were any other windows or portals or anything, but. Alright, now where? From here. Yeah, up there. Oh, I didn't even see that I could get in this door. Oh, no grief. invitation is needed to enter this building. That can't be a good sign. Right. No sign of a struggle. It seems Charlotte's friend knew the killer and let him in. The killer? Wait a minute. Is she dead? Charlotte just said, I haven't seen my friend, but... The oh, uh-oh. There's blood here. Emily's love letter. 5th of November, 1918. My dear Jacques, can't wait to see you again. Tonight? Tomorrow? I can hardly wait. Since we kissed on that bridge while the moon was so bright in the night sky, I want to feel your teeth again on my lips. Oh, the excruciating pain of your sweet bite. Oh, on my neck, you devil, you. For the longest second ever, I feared you were going to kill me right there on the bridge in the middle of the night. Do we know a Jacques? But no, my dear Jacques, you remained the delicate fiancé I know you are, and you were only teasing me. I can't wait to drink, drink your blood for good this time. She's becoming a vampire. And come back to my sweet friend Charlotte as an, an immortal. To play with her a little first, of course. Like you taught me how to play with mortals. Oh my gosh. 
And then I'll turn her into one of uh oh wait, I she's not already? I would have thought Lady Ashbury would have done that. Interesting. And we will rule the Knights of London and cleanse this city of its impure souls. Whoa. Emily wanted to become a vampire. Whoa. Something must have gone wrong. Someone is responsible for this mess. But who? What mess? Except for the little blood splatter on the bed there. Alright, we've already seen that. Blood. I should follow the trail. Little splitter splatters. Well, down we go, I guess. <gasps> Geronimo! Oh. Hmm. Into the north dock. That's the last blood stain I see. There's some skulls. All right, let's make sure we've got the weapons we want. One of them's a blinker, so we're gonna go with the saw. Nice. That was clean. And where's he? He is here. Do we take him? Ooh. He avoided my Oops. I think. Oh, 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 that was close. Funk. Uh -huh. Okay. Not as clean, but not bad. Do I have anything on him? He does. Two shillings and a lead rod. Ah, there we go. Handle parts and bullets. Okay, where do, where does the blood go from here? Ah, oh, there it is. Invi oh! Oh, no! Wait a minute. I don't get a, a character card for him, and I can't target him. Are we talking? Oh no, is this Emily? Hey, hey, talk to me. Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh. I could ask you the same question. Holy I'm the shock. Marquis de Bois Colomb, and I strongly invite you to find your own game, sir. I'm not here to sustain myself. I'm currently investigating the death of a young woman killed by a vampire. A young woman killed by a vampire? Oh, <laughs> you're joking, right? Oh, I do love the British sense of humor. <laughs> what are you doing here? I recently decided to visit London. I've always dreamed of visiting a city on the verge of collapse. Such a delicate yet intense spectacle. You take pleasure from others' misery. I have been a totally depraved and immoral creature since the day I was reborn, oh. sir. And probably before. What do you plan to do here? Take pleasure. Take pictures. Enjoy the show. Have fun. Believe me, I won't be the only foreign immortal who bought a ticket to the fair. <laughs> wow. And who exactly are you? 
I am Jacques Michel Guillaume Florimond, the Marquis de Bois Colombe, like at your coat. service, my dear cousin. Are you French? Dr. Reed. Come on. You're French, but your English is quite good. I was born in France, sir, but I consider myself a traveler of this world. Mmm, so many countries, so many tantalizing tastes. Dear cousin, are we related? We could be of the same blood, my dear. I tend to consider all Econs as family, don't you? Not quite. I followed the trail of blood from her room to here. Oh, you're referring to that young woman. Yes, the meeting turned messy. I'm afraid I ruined my last wedding goat. So you admit you murdered her? I admit nothing, my good sir. I only regret the blood of that girl staining my clothes. Oh, blood can be so messy. What happened? She wanted to become one of us. Not the first time I have received such a proposal, but... Uh, I must admit her direct approach tempted me. And then what? Her body rejected my blood. It happens, you know, sometimes even with voluntary prey. At least her gurglings brought me some fun, until the artery burst. Oh. Where... Is the body, though? Did I miss something? There was no body in that apartment. All right, what do I do? But I believe you? You deserve to die. This is blue. I don't want to make the same mistake I made with Sean Hampton. So, I've obviously unlocked this... ...in some way, so... I believe you, sir. Emily's diary confirms your statement. Oh, Emily was her name. He still needs Quite to charming. be eliminated, though. Well, mystery solved, then. Yes, I suppose so. You can go. And what? so can you. Oh, farewell, sir. We just... May you enjoy the spectacle of this fallen city as much as I do. Are we gonna have to... deal with him... some other time? Gosh, look who's here. Do I... Do I run over here and just solve the Sean Hampton problem? I would go out this... Through here, make a right. I mean, we're already doing it.